Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark, this is Spaghetti Backpacking, and today I'm out here to talk with you guys about tarps. So, there are a lot of different tarps that you can get, and you can get tarps for hammock camping, you can get tarps for just going out and camping underneath the tarp. Uh, in place of a tent, you can use a tarp, you can use it for emergency protection, you can use it if you're out cowboy camping and a storm rolls in, just kind of throw it over you real quick. Very versatile piece of equipment that you can set up in a lot of different ways. But today I want to talk with you guys about a new tarp that I've got that I've switched to and really why I would highly recommend if you're looking for a tarp, you start out going this direction rather than going through all the iterations that I've gone through. So why don't we take a look at what I'm talking about and get into it. Okay, so the tarp that I wanted to show you guys today is my hammock gear Cuban fiber or Dyneema Winter Palace. So this is made of the Dyneema composite material that uh, formerly known as, as Cuban fiber. And it's a very thin, very strong material that is laminated to a plastic. And right now I've got it rolled up. It is in a hammock gear sleeve and I've got suspension lines on it. I've got a whole bunch of other stuff on it, but this is the size it packs down to. Now, why? would someone want a Dyneema tarp? It's expensive. Uh, that's, that's the biggest downsize is these are extremely expensive tarps, but they're also very, very lightweight. Now, the other disadvantage that they have is they don't pack down all that small. So this is a, an 11 foot with doors. This is a 12 foot wide bodied tarp that's in the membrane, the Silpoly membrane. And you can see it packs down a whole lot smaller. But this one doesn't have doors, has a little bit less coverage, and weighs about five ounces more than this one, the way they currently sit. So you're looking at about 12 ounces and about 17 ounces. So I switched to this one from the other hammock gear, Cuban fiber tarp, Dyneema tarp, which was the standard with doors. So I had the standard with doors, and I was out on a trip with Rain Man, and he busted out a winter palace. And I really didn't think there was that much difference between the two. And when you when you actually look at the weights, I think the weights just bare is like maybe eight and a half ounces versus six and a half ounces or eight ounces, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't recall, you could go on the website and look, but the, the difference between the standard and the Winter Palace really isn't that much. But when you have them side by side, the coverage that this one offers versus the standard with doors is a huge difference. And for me, I felt it was enough to go ahead and invest the money. These aren't cheap. You're gonna pay over $300 to, to get into one of these. And I went with the 11 foot. Looking back, I probably would have gone with the 12 foot um, had I thought more about it. But the 11 foot does cover every single hammock I have. It's just that with me kind of getting into the bridge hammocks a little bit, the 12 foot would have given a little bit better coverage on that. But I actually have a different tarp that I will probably start using for that that's that's uh, probably a little better suited to the, the bridge. But let's get this thing hung up so you can see exactly what it is that I like about this and how much coverage it does provide and how I use it. Okay, so right now I've got it strung up between these two trees and you can see that it's in the sleeve still. So I use the mesh sleeve because it allows it to dry out a little bit more when it's on the outside of your pack. It lets the rain come through here, lets the water kind of drain out so it doesn't get trapped in there quite as much. So one of the reasons I really like to use the snakeskin is it lets you put the tarp up and then you can actually deploy it and stake it out, have it ready. And then if you're just hanging around camp and you think that there's gonna be a storm that comes in later during the night, but you don't need it up now and you wanna just kind of communicate and, and just have, have fun hanging out with people in camp, you can put it back up in the snakeskin, be in your, your camp chair or sitting in your, you know, lounging in your hammock down here um, and just talking with everybody. And then if the storm rolls in, slide the snakeskin off, put it back out to the stakes that you've already put out and you're ready to go. Okay, so here's the tarp set up. You see it's nice, wide, comes, comes really far out. So I've got different setups that I can use with this, but right now I'm just using the two end pullouts so it actually has three pullouts on each side. You've got a middle one that can keep it tighter. And if you're expecting a really strong storm to come in, I would suggest tying everything out the way that you would. Now it also has the panel pulls on here. Now I use those a little bit different than 
uh, I used to. So I used to run these out and have them tied to my, my trekking poles or tied to a tree or just tied out to pull them out. But I've actually found a different way that I, I like doing it that I will show you. Right now I've got it on a continuous ridge line. And so if I was to set this up and put the hammock underneath here and it wasn't centered, it's got prussics. And so I would loosen everything up, move it, shift it to center it, and then everything would be good. So with these pullouts, all the pullouts that are on here, I've got lines attached to the, the tarp itself so I can cinch them up, tighten everything. So get it set up, go through, tighten everything down. Now the doors are deployed right now. Now what you can see right here is that the doors don't, when you've got it pitched as wide as I have it right now, which I really don't think is pitched all that wide, the doors don't come together all that well. And in order to really get them tight, you should be pulling them down a little bit more than I have. Um, but even so, you can see, even if I get them tight, it does not close. So at least a little bit of a gap there. In order to really have that overlap, you have to pitch it a little bit more narrow, which I like having it a little bit wider. And really, these doors provide quite a bit of protection, even like this. But in the worst of rains, you could really kind of narrow it down and then close these doors up, seal it in tight. Uh, but for what I'm doing, what I'm doing most of the time, this works out really well. Let's take a look at how I use my trekking poles with this one. Okay, so the way that I use my trekking pole to really take advantage of just how wide this thing can be and how roomy it can be inside is I extend my pole to its maximum length, okay? And then I put a shock cord loop on one side so my handle will go through that shock cord loop I go over the top of my continuous ridge line. And then on the pullout on the other side, I have an adjustable loop. And that loop will go over the end of my pole. And now what it does is it really pulls it out. You can see how much more this has lifted and pulled out, and it's done it on both sides. Now, if it's drooping too much to one side or the other, I can use the adjustable loop on the one side to pull it to even it out. Okay, from this side, you can see what it looks like without the pullouts pulled out. So it's it's still wide. I mean, it's it's still wide in here, but it's not nearly as wide as the other side, which is pulled out. So let's take a look at that one. Okay, so now we're down on the side that is pulled out and you can see, wow, it is quite a bit higher and just, it kind of like widens the top and then brings it down. So it makes it a little bit flatter up top and widens it out. So you can really get in here and have a lot of room. Now, having a tarp, I have thrown a tarp up when a big thunderstorm comes through as I'm hiking down the trail and I don't wanna get soaked or I need to take a little bit of a, a break, get something to eat, set up the tarp. You've got a nice, warm, dry spot out of the wind, out of the rain, that you can get something to eat and kind of recover for a little bit. Now for door management, what I do is a lot of times if it's not that bad of a, a, a day out, I'm not too worried about the rain, I may not have the doors closed if it's not all that windy. So right now the doors are closed over here. And the way that I do it is I've got a little bit of a hook and that hook comes over here and attaches. So I can run that through, undo it, and now the doors are free. So I have a loop on one side, a hook on the other, and opposite on the other side. So now I can take this loop, grab the hook from that side, pull them together, flip them, and now the doors are hung up out of the way. Now, if I wanted to make sure that I had more room, because these are sticking probably six to eight inches off of the side, I could run these on the outside of the tarp and have them completely out of the way from when you're inside. Just so you can see the difference, on the left-hand side over here, I went ahead and put the tarp doors on the outside. And on the right-hand side over here, you can see that the tarp doors are on the inside and so you can see how having them outside opens up a little bit more so that you've got room and it's not taking up any of the room but it does mean that if a quick storm comes up and you want to deploy them you've got to go outside to get them so in my opinion this is probably the ultimate tarp that you can get it's big it's roomy now you can get it in the 12 foot and get yourself a little bit more room. Um, 
and you could probably call around and, and talk to them and get a custom one made if you really wanted something even bigger than this but for me the the advantages are the lightweight now it doesn't compact down as small you saw that with the comparison with the 12 foot wide body that I've got it definitely doesn't come back compact down as well so you do need a little bit more room in your pack to, to store it but the weight savings for the coverage is absolutely tremendous uh, if you are on the fence about whether to go with like a sil poly or a sil nylon or a Dyneema absolutely if you can afford it this is the way to go uh, now there are some some trade-offs and so durability may be one of them I have not personally experienced any issues with durability on any of my DCF tarps I know that there are people out there who have horror stories hailstorms that have had holes punched in them I have not experienced that and I don't know many people that have uh, people have also had failures with with sil poly tarps with the membrane tarps I haven't so maybe it has a little bit to do with care so take care of your gear and it'll last a long time and provide you lots of great use this is definitely a great one the hammock gear winter palace check it out all right guys i've left a link for where you can find more information about this tarp down below if you guys have any questions any comments leave them down in the comment section down below if you haven't done so before i ask you to please consider hitting that subscribe button liking this video and giving me some feedback i love doing this stuff i love getting out here testing gear showing you guys what i'm using this is absolutely my go-to tarp right now and uh, i think it will be for the foreseeable future if you guys have anything at all you want to add let me know what you're using what your favorite tarp is and why you like that tarp if you've got this one let me know how it's been working out for you any issues with it i will see you guys down the trail thanks